For the rest of the morning, Jack practiced his new skill. <clears throat> Camelin helped him to refine his technique and taught him how to estimate where his feet needed to go when he came in to land. I think I need a rest, gasped Jack. I didn't realize how tiring flying would be. Let's go get some food, suggested Camelin. Follow me. Jack presumed they'd be making their way towards the house, but instead he followed Camelin as the raven flew over the hedge, across the main road, and around the back of the shops next to the church. They landed on a flat roof behind a fish and chip shop. Leave this to me, Camelin whispered. He swooped down, landed on the window ledge, and tapped on the window. He puffed out his chest and walked proudly up and down once the two women in the back who were preparing chips noticed him. Oh, look, exclaimed the younger woman. That crow's back. Ah, look, he's brought his girlfriend, too, replied the other woman, pointing towards Jack. The two women put their head on one side and smiled at Jack. He wasn't sure he liked being mistaken for a female crow. Here he goes, the older woman said and nudged the younger one in the ribs. Camelin shuffled along the window ledge, performing a kind of jerky dance. He nodded his head and hunched his wings up and down. After a bit of bobbing, he lifted one leg, then the other. Eventually, he flew back and joined Jack on the roof. Any minute now, he said excitedly, but be careful, the chips are usually red hot. They didn't have to wait long before the back door opened. The younger woman brought out a polystyrene tray piled high with chips and slid it onto the roof. There you go, she said kindly. Brought your lady friend out for lunch, have you? Camelin strutted around and gave the woman a display of his gratitude by doing a few one-legged twirls then promptly tucked in to his reward. Jack was ravenous. He managed to grab a few chips before Camelin could eat them all. Do they always feed you? He asked when the tray was empty. Oh, yes, and they always call me a crow. Now you know the kind of indignities I have to put up with. Well, at least they think you're a female, laughed Jack. But it was worth it. Those chips were great. Not a word when we get back, warned Camelin. If they think we've eaten, we won't be allowed any lunch, and it's a roast today with apple pie for afters. Not a word, Jack promised. Come on, time to go. We've got someone to see. Camelin took off, and Jack followed. He circled around the top of the church tower before landing on a parapet which ran around the bottom of the belfry. Once he landed and looked around, Jack gasped. The view was amazing. He could see the whole area. Glass Ruin Hill loomed high above them. He could see the forest where he'd met Arana and Newton Gill further along. Below was Ewell House. It wasn't hard for Jack to understand why Peabody had climbed the bell tower to spy on him. Won't they be worried about us? We've been gone a long time now. That's why I brought us up here so we've got an excuse when we get back. We're visiting. Jack looked around but couldn't see anyone. Camelin threw his head back. Timory! He shouted as loudly as he could. There was a movement from the ceiling of the belfry. A sleepy face peered down at them from the far corner. As soon as Timory realized who'd called, he got really excited and flittered down. Hello, hello! This is an unexpected pleasure. So good of you to drop in. Just being sociable, Camelin said sarcastically. And I've got a message for you from Nora. Camelin seemed disappointed that the tiny bat wasn't annoyed. He didn't seem to mind being woken up in daylight and looked genuinely pleased to have visitors. Does this mean you can fly now, Jack Brennan? He fussed. You'll be as good a flyer as Camelin in no time. Just you wait and see. Camelin coughed loudly and frowned at Timory. Jack's going home this afternoon and Nora says you're to keep a watch over his house tonight. Orin, Orin's going to be with him, too. But most importantly, I don't need you to report anything to me at all unless there's a really big problem, understand? Timory nodded vigorously until Camelin was satisfied that he understood. Well, we mustn't disturb your sleep. It's about time we got back. Oh, dear, piped Timory. Aren't you going to stay a bit longer? Nope, replied Camelin. Just a flying visit. 
Oh, do come again, Timory fussed. I love visitors. Any time, night or day. Well, I only have visitors during the day, Camelin grumbled. So there's no need for you to come calling on me in the middle of the night. He took off before Timory could say anything else. Goodbye, said Jack politely. Must fly. As Jack flew over the hedge of Ewell House, he saw Nora on the patio with her arms folded, looking crossly at Camelin. He could hear her telling him off. He landed on the grass and hopped over to them. You were supposed to have stayed in the grounds. What would you have done if you'd had a problem? I only took Jack to see Timory and to give him your message. I wouldn't have taken him if he wasn't flying so well, Camelin said with as much innocence as he could muster. And it's such a great view from the top of the belfry, I thought it would have help Jack have a better understanding of where everything is. I don't suppose any harm's been done, but next time you must tell me when you intend to go out. We were very worried. It's only Jack's first time out, and I can't believe you woke Timory up in the middle of the day. You were supposed to give him my message after supper. Camelin winked at Jack as he hung his head down as far as it would go. Timory was very pleased to see us, added Jack. He didn't seem to mind being woken up. I'm very sorry, said Camelin. I won't do it again. He gave Nora his pathetic, forlorn look, and she forgave him. Your granddad's calling round for you after dinner on his way home from the cricket club. I invited him to eat with us, but he said he was having a pub lunch with some friends from the gardening club. Jack and Camelin waddled over to the herborium. Jack lay on the floor once he'd transformed back. His arms and legs ached very badly, worse than they'd done before. Take this with you, Nora said as she put a brown jar on the table. Rub that on your arms and legs tonight before you go to bed. It's for aching muscles. Thanks. It was worth the pain. Being able to fly is the best thing in the whole world. 